Atticus authors and hopefully maybe a few future Atticus authors. Welcome back to the Atticus Training Zone. My name is Monique Danielle. If we have not met before, I'm the educational curator here over at Atticus. Um, I am very excited to be back with you. This is day five in a row that we are live streaming to introduce the new look of Atticus. It had a glow up. Uh, so hopefully you guys are all really excited about the changes. I already see some familiar faces in the comments section. So as usual, I'm just going to give a few minutes to let uh, the algorithm do its thing and announce to everyone that we are live. But while we're uh, waiting to dive in, if you want to say hello in the comments section, uh, we have a really amazing community here, really engaging and interactive. So we love to hear from everyone. Don't be shy. Let me know where you're uh, tuning in from and maybe what you're working on right now, uh, project-wise, writing-wise, that sort of idea. Uh, really looking forward to see what you guys are seeing in the comments today. Just to give you an overview of what is to come. Uh, this will be a little bit repetitive if you have been here for any of the previous live streams in the past few days, but the goal of this is to make sure that you are all brought up to speed and comfortable with the new look of Atticus. So we did a update to the user interface, which is basically just how things look. Uh, this was mainly so that we can prepare for future updates. So we absolutely understand change can be a bit jarring for people and when things look different, um, getting comfortable and getting used to where to find things again is a little bit um, of a surprise at times. So these live streams are really here to help you get comfortable and familiar and find where everything is. And then in the future, there will be now lots of space and a really strong foundation for all of the plans that are yet to come with Atticus. So um, if you're fairly new to the program or if you've been around since the early days, Hopefully you'll know that our goal overall with the program is to become a one-stop shop for authors. We want you to be able to jump into Atticus and do everything that you need to do um, from writing to publishing your book, uh, or at least getting published ready files to send off to a publisher. So um, currently you can do all of your writing and your formatting in Atticus, but we do have a lot of exciting features yet to come in terms of plotting and outlining and uh, the big one, which is collaboration. So this new user interface has set the stage to allow us to start rolling out some of those updates. So that's the why behind this update. Um, and today we'll, we'll jump into kind of, I guess the how or the what happened and I'll take you into my Atticus account and give you a quick demo. Um, if you have been here before and you wanna skip that part and just go to the frequently asked questions, it usually takes about 15 minutes to run through everything, but I hope you'll stick around um, and just watch the entire thing. Um, so I'm going to jump into the comments and see everybody is um, saying hello, hello, welcome. Gabriel, it's good to see you again. Uh, I think you made it to every single one of these live streams. We really appreciate your contribution to the comments. You're absolutely amazing. Um, hello, Sam. Uh, finally made it to this. Well, I'm so glad you're here today. Thank you for joining us. We've got hello from Lionel. I'm not going to be able to keep up and show all of these, but hello from Lionel in San Diego. I'm so glad you could make it as well. Um, hello, Anne just released uh, your book formatted with Atticus on the 12th. Congratulations. That is so exciting. I absolutely, I just don't, I can't get enough of stories like that. I love to hear about books being published. Thank you for sharing. Um, good day, Ross. Welcome back. Um, we'll be finishing this as a replay. That's totally fine. If anybody is wondering, these live streams live forever on our YouTube channel. So if you have to jump out at any time or if you're coming back and want to watch uh, some of the previous versions, you're welcome to do that. They're uh, on our YouTube channel and you can watch um, watch any of the replays. Um, just as an update, this is going live on YouTube, but it is also being streamed in our Facebook community. And unfortunately with our streaming channel, I don't always get a name along with the comment. So I am seeing your comments. I just don't always know exactly who said them. So welcome from Vancouver Island. Um, that used to be my stomping grounds as well. Absolutely beautiful there. Um, Sam, you were gifted with Atticus. That is exciting. Working on a thriller novel in Florida. Um, I hope you're enjoying the program. I love that it was gifted to you. That's a wonderful gift. Hello, Michael from Tokyo. I'm so glad you're here as well. 
Um, Anne is over in Facebook. Thank you for letting us know you're here, uh, trying to get two books formatted. Okay, I can see we've got some questions coming in already. Um, we will have plenty of time for questions um, after I run through the demo. So I will be going back through the comments, but if I miss this one, cause it's kind of right at the beginning, just make sure to, to pop it in again after the demo is done. And I will answer any questions that you guys have um, at that point. Uh, welcome Jan from Minnesota who writes romances. That's lovely. It's definitely a big month for romances um, in February. <laughs> Hi, Carolyn, welcome back. It's so lovely to have you here. I deserve an all paid vacay. I think after um, after everything has settled down with this uh, new update and we've got all of our new tutorials released and, and ready and stable, I think I will take um, a few days off to give my brain and my eyeballs a break. I've been staring at a screen um, filming videos for a few weeks straight now. So um, I, I agree with you, Carolyn. I will take that vacation as soon as everything is settled. So thank you all for being here. I really appreciate it. We're really excited about uh, this update. It has been um, about five days now because we, we went live every day since the update. And so far it has been just rave reviews. Um, we do know a little, a little bit of panic kind of started out this, which we were expecting just because things look different. Uh, but all of the, your favorite features are still there in Atticus. They maybe just have a slightly different uh, location in the app, which is what we're going to go through today. So um, while I'm going through, I will be in my Atticus account. I won't be able to see the comments, just so you know, but I will come back after the demo and uh, go through all of your comments. So if you have questions or comments along the way, leave them in the comments, the chat box below. I will come back to them. Um, so don't be shy, ask your questions. That's what we're here for. But to get started, I'm just going to jump in and I'm going to share my Atticus account with you. So you should be seeing that on the screen now. And this is the new look of the dashboard. If you are not seeing this, or um, if at any point in the future you ever kind of see a white screen when you try to log in, sometimes Atticus does need to be refreshed. Uh, this is sometimes because of the program itself um, or because your browser has updated and that has created a need for just a refresh of everything. So if ever, um, you're, you sign into Atticus and it does not look like this, what you'll wanna do is just come over to the profile icon uh, in the top right here and just click the logout button. If you don't see it, then you can just skip to the next step. But once you're logged out, um, you can just sign right back in. And then you're gonna wanna do what we call a hard refresh. So on a Windows computer, you're going to press Control Shift R. On a Mac computer, you will press Command Shift R. That covers most devices and it just gets everything refreshed. It's kind of like turning your computer off and on again. Um, just, a, just a refresh with your browser, get everything running as quickly and smoothly as possible. You may have noticed that it also exported a um, file when you, whenever you log out of Atticus, or if you click this save button up here, which says content backup, it will export what is called a JSON file. This is a snapshot of your entire account on Atticus, which can be used to restore everything to that exact point in time. Now, one of the beautiful things about Atticus is that it does automatically save everything that you're writing as you're writing it. So if you um, go write a chapter today and then go to bed, come back on tomorrow, all your content will be there. It does back up into the cloud, Whenever you press that backup button or when you log out, though, it creates uh, like a timestamp. So our programmers, if anything were to happen, if you accidentally deleted a book or you wanted to go back to a previous version or anything like that, having that point in time timestamp really makes a difference when our, our programmers have to go and check the archive for something. So this doesn't come up very often, um, but if ever you need it, we just recommend maybe like once a week at least logging out of Atticus and doing the refresh or backing up your content after every session is fine. You don't have to keep all of your JSON files. You can just keep the most recent one. Or if you're making major changes and you think you might want to revert to a previous version, you can keep those as well. Another thing that you can do, which I actually haven't mentioned um, in these live streams before, but if you are ever making major changes to your book, um, if you click the three dots beside any copy of your book, you can 
create create a duplicate. So if you want to see how things look with a different theme or different content, uh, and you're not quite sure if you're going to want to revert back, you can make a duplicate and it's the exact same content, uh, but you can edit one and the original will stay the same. So that's an option. I'm getting ahead of myself though. Let's look at the new dashboard. So all of the features are the same as what you had before, it just looks a little different. So now um, up at the top, you have your upload a book, start a new book or create a new box set features. Really easy to use as always. To the top right, this is a new section here. It will link you straight through to our tutorials page on our website. That is where we keep um, written copies of any of our tutorials. So we walk you through pretty much every single feature that's available on Atticus and how to use it. Um, and these include screenshots as well. So you can learn at your own pace. If there's something you want to explore, you're not quite sure how to do something, you can click through to our tutorials and you will likely find um, some information there to help you through the process. At any point, if our YouTube videos or our tutorials or the chatbot on our website is just not giving you the information you need, you can absolutely always write into our support email. We will take very good care of you. We have an amazing support team that continues to grow because we find it so valuable to have support ready for you at all times. So we are there, we are ready to help, um, and you never have to worry about writing in. There are new, no stupid questions as the saying goes. So you can um, write in at any time, but we do try to give you as much information as possible so that you can go through this on your own if you're more comfortable that way. So with your books in your account, yours may be more full or less full than mine, but all your more most recent works will show front and center. And then if you scroll down, you will now see your master pages. So this used to be tucked away in a little gallery on its own, and you could either click through to the gallery or you could access your pages, your master pages in a book. You can now access it right from your home dashboard. You can open up a page, you can make a change, and you can apply it right from your dashboard here. Or you can still do it from within a, in a book as well. That is still an option. Now, if you click see all um, either by the master pages beside your recent works here, or if you come up to the top center and click my books, you get a more full view of everything that is included in your account currently. All of the works that you have um, been working on in Atticus. This includes all of your books, all of your box sets, all of your master pages. You can sort them by all, by books, or simply by your master pages. You can search by the title of your book, the author, if you're using various pen names, or if you have at any point set up a version or a project, you can sort um, and filter by those here. So I know I've set up a whole set of workbooks, so I can type that in here and only the workbooks will show. Um, you can also sort by this way. Currently, your options are recently added, date modified, or alphabetically. Um, by project or version will be added to this list very soon. We just have to make a few small tweaks and they will be back. You can sort your um, dashboard here either by the standard grid view or in list view if you are more comfortable this way, whichever you prefer. And then as always to get into a book, you just have to click on your title thumbnail and it opens up the book to the writing, uh, writing editor. A few things have changed here. So I'll go through all of the different features. This isn't a tutorial on how the features work. It is just kind of a lay of the land, where to find what. So the left navigation panel, you have all of your chapters in the body section. You have your front matter here. You have still the added chapter button and you've got your um, extra pages where if you wanna add some of the templates, the preset layouts, um, if you need to replace a title page, or if you want to add a full page image, this is also where you can insert any of your pre-created master pages. And if you need to import another docx file into the book you've already started working on, you can do that here. Some of the differences is you used to have your book title up at the top here and you would click on that to open your uh, book details page. Now it is a really easy to access button. So you can click uh, the button to edit your book details. 
this is um, a really good example of how we've tried to streamline everything. So instead of having to scroll down a long page full of details, it's a, a little bit more well organized, easy to find everything, um, more white space, more just easier to see, but all of the content is still there. So you can have your book details here, you have your publisher details if you want to add those. You can still upload your ebook cover. Um, and this was asked last time, and I thought it was a really great question, so I'll bring it up now. On your home dashboard, uh, you don't want to judge the size of the icons there based on what image size you import as your ebook cover. You always want to prioritize the size of the ebook cover for the platform that you are uh, publishing on. So for example, if you're primarily publishing uh, through KDP, they recommend an ebook cover of um, 1600 by 2560 pixels. So that's the size you want to upload your book cover here. If it doesn't show the entire thing on your home dashboard, it's just that's just based on your screen size or screen resolution. So don't worry about that. You want to make sure that this is the publisher recommended settings for the ebook cover. Um, so also in the book details section, you can do your exports here. You can export to EPUB, PDF, PDF or docx files. And this download snapshot button here is a backup of just the book that you're working on. So we already talked about the backup content here, which exports a JSON file and backs up your entire account on Atticus. This one here will export a JSON file that is just the individual book you're working on and uh, creates a snapshot or a timestamp of this book in your um, cloud archive. Going back into the writing editor, up here at the top, you have your standard toolbar, which hasn't changed very much. You still have all of your settings here. Um, the big difference is at the end, you used to have the sprint timer and the apply smart quotes. Those have been relocated. So I will show you where those are in just a moment when we kind of get to that section. But otherwise, the main writing toolbar is fairly the pretty much the same. The uh, chapter heading, the chapter menu options used to have a little gear icon right beside the title. It has now just moved to the right. This is just adding a little bit more consistency because these icons are always to the right of whatever you're working on. So your chapter menu options are just over here. These will override any settings that you have set for your theme overall for the book. Uh, so if in just one chapter you don't want to have the heading, you can select that here. Or if you want to hide it in the table of contents, that sort of stuff is in the icon here. We used to have the, um, the saving, saving, saved notification up here in the top right. Uh, for consistency with other programs, we've just moved it down here, which is where you will often see it in most programs. So this will tell you that your work is saving. Also, due to popular demand, we've made it a little bit easier for you to export your content to DocX. So you can find that button in the writing panel right down at the bottom here. This is the new home for your sprint timer. So you can select that here. And this is where you can see your word count. So you can set it to uh, the book as a whole, the chapter you're working on, or if you have a selection highlighted. This used to be uh, a menu that you could click on and get your word count. We found that a lot of authors want to know their word count at a glance. They want to know how um, far they've got to go to get to their daily count or, or where they are in their book. So having this set so that it is always there was a popular request and makes it a little bit easier for you to see at all times now. The right panel, you used to be able to pull out a separate menu called the More Tools menu. It's just a little bit more streamlined here, but all the features are the same. So you have your writing editor preferences here. This is just for your comfort as a writer. Uh, it, it affects the writing section only. It does not export anything that you want to export. You will set up in the formatting portion. Uh, so if you're writing in Atticus, this is just how it makes it more comfortable for you as a writer. You can also do your find and replace uh, for chapter or book level. This is pretty much the same as it always was. Your goals are more or less the same as they always were, the book goal and the writing habit. And this is where the Smart Quotes applicator has moved. So you used to see the little icon up here letting you know if there were any inconsistencies in your quotes. And that is now in the sidebar. And you can still apply as always. It works the exact same way. It's just a slightly new location. The other one major change is you can now open the previewer 
right from the writing panel. You don't have to be in formatting mode to open this. You can come down to the very bottom right and open the previewer here. You can still change to print mode or uh, any other device setting that you would like. And uh, you can close that out if you want to have a more distraction-free writing experience. So that um, that's just a slightly new location. So you can add that down here. That's the writing editor. Now I'm gonna jump into formatting. So once your book is all written and you want to create your custom theme, this is almost the same as it was before. Uh, you don't have your left navigation panel here. Instead, you have a lot more space to see everything. You can go through the Atticus pre-created themes or you can uh, work on one that you've customized yourself. You can click the three dots beside any theme that you want to work on and you can edit it to make it your own. This is where things start to look a little bit different. But again, our goal here was make it uh, a little bit sleeker, a little bit easier to find everything, quicker to navigate through. Instead of having to scroll down a huge long page, you can now access a menu and jump right to the portion that you want to deal with. Everything other than that works the same. So you can turn on or off certain elements. If you do not want to have them in your book, you can add your chapter image here. Uh, you can still move it around. You can use your um, background image if you choose. All of these are pretty much the same as they were, just slightly different layout. Um, paragraph settings, subheading settings, scene break, and notes are all more or less exactly the same, just easier to jump to using the side panel here. Where it did change a little bit is the print settings. So for your print book, you do have some extra options that are not uh, set in the ebook version. So your ebook version, a lot of features are set by the individual user device, um, including like the font choices and um, you don't have to choose the page size because it just depends on the device, that sort of thing. But you do need to have these settings um, really nailed down for the print version of your book. So in the print layout here, you have your margins and you can size your indents here if you're using indents in your book. You can choose your alignment to be either justified or hyphenated or both. Keep options refers to if you have either an ornamental break or a subheading that ends as the last line on one page and then the following paragraph gets bumped to the next page. Keep options will keep that ornamental image or subheading with the next paragraph so they get bumped together. Layout priority down here, uh, you can choose this. I always emphasize the fact that this is one of the um, one of the multiple areas, but one of the biggest areas that book formatters really earn their high priced um, keep. So widows and orphans refers to uh, solitary lines that appear either at the bottom or top of the page where they're kind of separated from their family, uh, which is the larger paragraph. Protecting against those is a huge job in most formatting programs because you have to go through page by page, sometimes even line by line and make adjustments. Atticus has a setting where you can prevent against those. If you choose widows and orphans, they will not appear in your book. There are certain situations where this can actually create a problem because the page just does not fit properly or occasionally it can cause um, slightly unbalanced pages. It just depends on your book and the sentence and paragraph structure. Another option is to set it to balanced page layout. And this ensures that the last line of each page is going to be very balanced. It makes a, um, an aesthetically pleasing, very equal uh, symmetrical page. And then the best of both is the Atticus algorithm, which first prioritizes for widows and orphans, and then it goes through and balances the pages. This will never be 100% perfect, absolutely all of the time, but it does the best job at mitigating both of those features um, with literally the click of a button. So it can save absolutely hours um, off of the formatting process. So that's uh, the print layout options. The typography refers to the font in your print book. So you can choose your, your body font and size and line spacing here. The header and footer is the running text along the very top and bottom of the page, usually where your page number is. You can choose your layout um, from the options here. There's quite a few and you can choose those. You can set the font and size here as well. And then finally, you do have the trim sizes. So you can set the size your book that will be printed at. 
And then you have your previewer. You can see how everything looks. Again, you can, of course, switch it over to print and see how it looks in print. You can flip through your pages. You can even jump through different chapters. And then when you're fully confident that everything is how you want it to be, you can export to PDF or EPUB using these buttons down here, or again, as you saw before in the edit book details. Uh, the one other, other thing to mention, this was the same in the previous version, but I'll mention it just in case anybody didn't realize it. But this uh, page count at the bottom of the print version refers to the entire page count of your book. That is the number you will want to use for your book cover design because it adjusts the size of the spine. It does include every page in your book, including the front matter. Your page numbers, the pagination on the page will never match this number just so that you're aware because the pagination starts from page one in the body section and it doesn't include your front matter, whereas this page count does. So that is a quick um, overview of where everything is located now uh, since the update has occurred. I know I do talk fast. Um, that's because I wanna get through all of that and give you a great rundown um, and then have plenty of time to come back and answer any questions that you guys might have. So go ahead and pop all of your comments in the comments box here. Um, I will answer anything that you have to do. Um, if you have questions or comments about the update, let me know. Uh, our programmers have done a really, really amazing job at getting this ready for you. And we're so excited about what's to come. So this really had to set the scene for that. And as I mentioned at the beginning, we know it was a little bit of a shock to some people. But for the most part, I think almost everyone who has been using Atticus consistently over the past five days or so is already used to this new look. And once you find the new features one time, that's kind of all you need and you kind of forget how it even used to look. So hopefully that's the case for you guys as well. But let's see if anybody has any questions or comments. Um, Carolyn being a cheerleader in the comments section, um, I have a fruit fly in my room. It was here bothering me yesterday too. I swear it's just one. Um, thank you. You guys are so amazing. Um, we've, we've got such great, um, such a great community. Car Carolyn is cheerleading here um, for Sam and Gabrielle is uh, just talking up the program. We really, really appreciate you. Um, and you mentioned lifetime access. Thanks for not being a subscription. Yeah, absolutely. Anybody who has followed Dave Chesson of Kindlepreneur or Publisher Walkout for any period of time knows how he feels about subscriptions um, and having lifetime access and just a one-time cost uh, is really wonderful. Um, as an author myself, I absolutely appreciate that as well. And just so that everyone knows, all the uh, updates that are still yet to come, they're all gonna be included in your one-time cost. So just things to look forward to. Um, and we definitely do try to keep it updated and um, in the front of these, the industry as much as possible. So from Facebook, you're, I'm not seeing all these options when I use Firefox. Do I need to access Atticus in Chrome? Uh, so no, if you are not, you should see all of these options in Firefox. Um, if you could be more specific about what you're not seeing, let me know. What is different about Firefox is that um, it doesn't natively support progressive web applications. So if you sign into app.atticus.io in your browser, it should work exactly the same in Firefox as it does in Chrome. The difference is if you want to use it as the app for you, if you want to install the app where it opens in its own window and it's not um, a tab in your browser, Firefox, you need to install an extra extension to allow that to work. However, all of the features are exactly the same in the browser as they are in the app. Um, so it's not necessary. If you're not seeing all of these updates, it may just not have taken. Um, so logging out of Atticus, logging back in, doing the hard refresh that I mentioned, the control shift R, or command shift R. If that doesn't do the trick, you may need to clear your browser's cache. Um, you can either Google that for yourself or you can write into our support email, support at atticus.io, and we'll be able to walk you through that as well. Sometimes things get stuck in like the history of your browser um, and it just needs to be cleaned out a bit. So we can help you with that, but it should be the same. Um, oops, sorry, I will get to that question. I just don't wanna get myself out of order. 
Um, okay, Gabriel asks, do you plan to produce more pre-made themes? I think so, yes. Um, this is something that it's not the highest priority on our list because we want to get the features that don't yet exist out. Um, but we would like to include more preset themes. Um, I also had a comment on our YouTube channel uh, just within the last couple of days about choosing the theme that is right for your genre and genre specific themes and how do you know what is what. Um, so because themes are so customizable and you can change everything from the image to the font to suit your book and your style, um, creating more presets isn't the absolute biggest priority for us. But uh, what I do now have on my to-do list is um, I will be doing some live streams or tutorials in the future about how you can do some genre research to customize these themes for yourself that are set uh, kind of targeting your target market and what your reader expectations are um, for your genre and that sort of thing. So um, I will put that on my list to do uh, in future videos. So hopefully that helps a little bit. Welcome, Benjamin. Thank you so much for being here from Texas. Love to hear it. Howdy. Michael says, awesome new features. Thank you so much. We appreciate that. Where in the new UI can we turn the ProWriting Aid plugin on or off? So ProWriting Aid is not um, something that you turn on or off in Atticus itself. That is a browser extension that you will have um, in your browser. So if you are having any trouble with this, you can email into our support. But basically, ProWriting Aid has a Chrome extension. Um, if you're not using Chrome, I know they do have a few other extensions as well, but Chrome is the one I'm most familiar with. Uh, so you'll enable the Chrome extension for your browser as a whole, and it will work in Atticus as well. If it was working in Atticus, and then since the update, it was not, or if ever your browser updates and it no longer works automatically, sometimes you have to uninstall the, the ProWriting Aid extension and reinstall it. Um, and then do the Atticus logout, login, and it, then it should take again. So it's not it's not an on off in Atticus itself, but rather in your browser. So hopefully that made sense. If you need any further clarification, you can write into our support and we have like step-by-step -step instructions that we can send you. Okay, Benjamin, can you give any insight into what is coming next after this amazing glow up? Happy with what is here, just always wanting more. I, I hear ya. Um, tell the programmers and everyone a great job. Thank you so much for that. We, we love telling our programmers how happy everyone is with the updates as they are. I can absolutely give you some insight into what is coming. The next few updates, while I don't have an exact timeline, we never say exactly when anything is happening because it really just depends on um, the testing and the quality control. We go through so many rounds, it's really unpredictable when it will be uh, you know, perfect and ready for release. But we have, um, we're going to be introducing more fonts to the system, which I know everyone has been very excited about. So you'll have more font choices for your chapter headings and such. Um, we're going to have a whole really cool library of um, fancy drop caps. So that has been very highly requested as well. So you'll have a variety of uh, stylized drop caps both two lines and three lines deep. So you can have some variety there. Um, we will be working on dark mode and custom trim sizes. These often come up as well. So those will be coming. Um, we do have plotting and outlining uh, options in development, but the big thing, the biggest priority, the biggest focus that our team is working on is collaboration features. So these are going to be absolutely game changing to the industry, nothing out there exists like what we are working on right now. Um, I don't have a timeline for it, but it is in development. And all of these changes were really in support of being able to make this um, collaboration feasible. So what I mean by collaboration is you will be able to work with uh, beta readers or your ARC team right within the program, give them access or remove access as needed to different features. You can work with um, graphic designers or editors uh, we'll even have a publish, publishing house or publisher version where you can work with multiple authors inside the account. You'll be able to co-write your books um, and just have all sorts of features where you can work with other people inside 
uh, your Atticus account. Some of these features are going to require the other person to also have an Atticus account and some will not. So for example, your beta readers are not going to need to own Atticus in order to come beta read your book inside the program, but they will be able to leave comments that you can then um, really easily work into your book. So that is one of, that is the big thing that we are working on. Um, it has been the kind of end goal, not the end goal, because we'll always always be updating and adding new features, but that has been like the big picture since day one. And we are getting closer and closer to making that a reality. So very, very exciting stuff. Um, and I'm sure there's a lot more that I'm also kind of some smaller features that we'll add as well. Um, always feel free to make requests when something really makes a big difference to your workflow. We do listen to our authors and we have introduced a lot of features already based on requests from people. So if there's something that you absolutely are dying to see, let us know right into our support. Um, we'll put it on a list. We can never practice, uh, promise when it will be something that we can work on, but uh, we, we take everything into consideration. And if it is feasible, if it is possible within the constraints of the program, we, we certainly do consider everything. Uh, okay, is the docx what should be sent to an editor? Generally, yes, until those collaboration features are here anyways. Um, yes, editors work primarily in uh, Word, but even if they're working in some other program, they'll need the docx file. Just so everyone is aware, Word is not able to keep all of the formatting that Atticus does. Um, so when you export to docx, it will keep all of your content, all of your chapter headings and your page breaks. Um, and all everything in the content portion of your book, but it won't keep the formatting. This is perfect for a backup copy. It's perfect for your editors. Then they can make their changes and you can re-import it. If you've already set your theme, all you have to do is click that theme button again to um, apply it to your updated book. Um, okay. Song Fantasy, welcome back. Thank you for joining us again. Uh, my chapters begin on the right. For one chapter, I want a full page image on the left page opposite the chapter. How to do? Do I have to add a page? Uh, yes. So I went through this on yesterday's live stream and I had my images all ready. Um, and I'm not going to do it again because while I'm streaming, it makes my program really slow whenever I'm working with the graphics. So it was not saving properly. But I can give you a basic rundown on what you would want to do. So when you have your chapters here, you have um, you would set up your theme to do a background image, which I should be able to do here. So you want to edit your theme. And then for your chapter, wait, let me reread your question, make sure I'm not. Chapters begin on the right for one chapter. I want to add a full page image on the left page opposite the chapter. Oh, OK, so you're not even asking about a two page spread. So I don't even have to um, go into this. If you wanted to do two page spread, what you would do is on the first page of your chat on your theme, you would include a background image, but that's not even where you're going for. You just want a image on the left side of the book so that your chapter starts on the right with the text content with the image on the left. So what you would do is you would come down here and beside the chapter button, click the three dots and insert a full page image. And you would make this image just appear before whatever chapter it is that you want the image there. And you can upload your image here. You can give it a title. Uh, if you don't want this to show up in the table of contents, you can click the gear icon here and hide in table of contents so that it's not showing as a listing. Uh, upload your image. Set the bleed settings if you have them, that sort of idea. And then in the three dots beside the title in the left navigation pane, you want to begin on left side. So if you put this page to left side, that will automatically force your next page to the right side, assuming your page, your image is set properly. If you have your image and it's too big to fit on the page, it can insert a blank page after it because um, it doesn't have the right padding. So you want to make sure you have your image set to perfectly match the trim side of your book. If you're using full bleed, that means trim size plus bleed. If you go to our tutorials page, we do have a post talking all about that and it has a calculator so that you can make sure you get your image size just right. So that's how you would do it. You would just click the three dots and begin on left side and then your next chapter should automatically begin on the right side. But if you wanna just reinforce it, you can click the three dots and begin on right side and that will take care of that for you. 
What is the most common print size for paperbacks? Um, this varies generally by country. In North America, I believe the most common is still six by nine, but it does tend to be a little bit different depending on genre. Um, some genres are still heavily dominated by traditional publishers and they kind of lean towards the mass market paperback size as, as, and they have, you know, they have the small books and then they have the trade paperback sizes and then they have the hardcover sizes. Um, the majority of books that are self-published, I do believe are six by nine for the most part now, assuming you're writing a novel, uh, not like a children's book or something along those lines. Really, I would recommend that you go and look at your genre itself because five and a half by eight is very popular for some genres. Um, it really depends on, on what the reader expectations are. So you'll want to kind of do that research. Um, I'm going to do a shameless plug here for Publisher Rocket. It's kind of our our cousin company. If you have that tool, it does um, tell you what uh, trim sizes are common in different categories and that sort of idea. But you can just jump onto Amazon and go through the bestseller categories and then click on some of the books and see what their trim sizes are and uh, just kind of do a little bit of research for yourself that way. Also, as I mentioned, different countries have different standards. So if you're publishing in the UK, the trim sizes do tend to be a little bit different. Um, it just kind of depends. But I do think six by nine is, you can't go wrong with six by nine. Um, okay, Sam says, I use a Apple Pages um, and Atticus for writing a lot. However, I've noticed that when I try to import docs, ooh, let's see, you got cut off here. Where's the rest of that? Um, from Apple Pages to Atticus, the formatting and chapters don't show up correctly. How can we fix this? Uh, so Pages, I'm, you have, it sounds like exported to docx file, which is clearly what you need to do first. Um, this will depend slightly on your book, on your programming. Are you using the standard heading one tags um, or adding a page break between your chapters? Um, if you're doing all the recommended steps that we suggest for Word, but just doing them in pages themselves, they should mostly transfer over. If they are not, uh, one kind of workaround that we've seen work quite well and this works for LibreOffice and uh, OpenOffice as well. Um, there's another one that I'm forgetting that I have seen this work for. Um, import your file into Google Docs and then immediately download it as a docx file. And that will often fix a lot of different issues. This also works um, when you're exporting from Scrivener. Scrivener has a lot of different styles in their formatting, which don't always transfer through to Atticus. But quite often, if you upload into Google Docs and then download the docx file from there, it simplifies everything and it just works a lot better with Atticus. Um, a lot of the, the styles are stripped and renamed into the standard default um, options there. So you can give that a try and hopefully that helps. Um, but if, if one thing is not working, so if, if, for example, your chapter titles set as heading one is not working, try making them 20 point fonts instead. And that shouldn't change no matter what file type you're using. A 20 point font is a 20 point font and Atticus will recognize that as a chapter title and break up your chapters that way. So, um, go through our, our prepare a doc X file. And if one, one tip isn't working from pages, try one, try one of the other options and Hopefully that will work better. Okay. Is there a way for the community to share a theme? If I made one I really like, is there any way to export or share it? Um, not right now. This may be something that is option once collaboration features are available. Right now you can't really bring in any Atticus specific file type. So the JSON file is Atticus specific but only our programmers can use it right now. So our programmers can restore it, but there's no way to export an Atticus theme and import that theme into another account right now. But that is something that has been brought up and we've talked about it and it is a very cool idea having some sort of marketplace where you can share or um, sell these kind of things. It's really a cool idea. We love it. Um, I can't make any promises one way or the other, but it would have to wait for the collaboration features to be rolled out in order to even make it possible. 
Um, from Facebook, I use 12 point font for print books. I learned 10 is very small and hard to read. Um, 12 point is quite common for a lot of genres. Again, this is gonna be really specific to your genre. A lot of more suspense thriller books use the smaller fonts. Um, something like romance or contemporary tends to go a little bit larger. Um, it really depends on your genre and who your target market is. If you know that your readership um, is maybe seniors, they're probably going to want to gravitate towards larger fonts. Um, again, also like middle schoolers, they want larger fonts because they don't want to be overwhelmed with the words on the page. Um, so you, the better you know your audience, the better you can make these choices for them, but absolutely nothing wrong with 12 point font. Carolyn is excited for the fancy drop caps. So are we, uh, thank you. It'll be very cool to see what you guys do with those drop caps when they're released. Um, Debbie, welcome Debbie. Thank you for joining us. Is the editing feature writing no longer available from the format tab? I used to be able to view what the book looked like on the right and edit from the middle while in format. Yes, you, you don't have to go to formatting mode to do this anymore. So from the writing section here, you can come down here and click the previewer icon in the bottom right. So you don't have to be in the formatting tab in order to see your preview while you're writing now. So you can flip through your book this way uh, while you're writing on it, writing in it. So hopefully that helps. Um, that has been a fan favorite for a lot of people. Um, Sam, I use ChatGPT to help rewrite and improve my drafts. Any AI writing tool integrations planned in the future? Not an immediate need, but would be welcome in the future. Uh, Atticus does not currently have any AI plans whatsoever. It is a very hot topic, um, very contentious topic, as I'm sure you're all aware. We don't have any plans for it. We are not saying it is bad. We are not saying it is good. Um, but right now, we just don't have any plans to integrate it with Atticus. So. Uh, if anything changes, we will absolutely tell you all about it. But right now, the closest thing we have to AI is our chatbot on our website, which we are training very carefully to help you guys out. Um, is there a limit for the number of images we upload? No, currently there's no image uh, upload limitation. Uh, you may want to impose self-impose a limit on your books if you um, have any delivery fee issues if you're selling your epub through amazon's 70 uh, percent royalty rate that can increase the file size uh, but aside from that it is really up to you you can have as many images in your book or in your account as you need um, we do know some people are even creating uh, picture books are um, low content books where every page is a picture you can do that no problem we do recommend, um, however, trying to keep your file size per image at 100 kilobytes or less. And this will not only protect your books from loading properly, um, but it also just protects your account and gets everything to run as smoothly as possible. Uh, Sam, you're very welcome for the formatting advice. I stopped using Scrivener and now write in Atticus as it's so much easier to use. Oh, that's exciting. Um, we do know Scrivener is um, a really wonderful writing platform. It offers so many options that a lot of authors really are used to and they love that um, about Scrivener and the Atticus probably seems very plain to them. But what we found is that Atticus offers what you need and it doesn't offer all of the extra bells and whistles that are maybe um, icing on the cake, or I mean, not even icing on the cake, but just the extras. Um, it really is designed so that you can write and publish a very streamlined, uh, professionally formatted book without, without going too overboard in the weeds and uh, getting too fancy or technical. So um, I'm glad you're finding it a great experience. That's wonderful. I write in Atticus myself as well. I find it very easy and not overly distracting. I know um, I think Scrivener is very, very cool, but when I tried to use it, I ended up spending more time playing with the features than I did writing my book. So it really depends on what kind of writer you are. Um, okay. Um, I find it a very useful, yes. Yeah, so, so this is the previewer, particularly for seeing image placement. Absolutely, yes. Um, one thing that I haven't gone over in the live streams yet 
is the image that you see in the writing editor. These are all kind of a standardized placeholder size. So it's always look centered. It doesn't ever show that it's wrapped, but you can set it so that it is wrapped um, and you can see the image size changes over here. So I can change the image size up and update my image and you see it reflect in the uh, previewer here where it did not change in the edit, uh, writing editor. I can also make it smaller. I can left align it. I can wrap my text and update it. And again, this writing editor image did not change, but it did change in the preview. Um, so absolutely for images, that is a really, really handy feature. Um, okay, Michael, I'm using Atticus to write my dad's memoirs based on interviews. Wow, that's exciting. That must be so, um, so interesting to, to read. Very, very cool. Scrivener has a split screen function that's handy for looking at interview notes as I write. Is split screen in your roadmap? So I don't know that split screen specifically is in the roadmap, but we do have plans to have notes, um, character profiles, uh, pretty much anything that you would need to create a series Bible will be worked into Atticus and they will be linked and you will have pop-ups and you can do all sorts of cool things in really user-friendly, easy ways um, so that you can reference your notes and your plotting and your outlining uh, that is in the future. Again, we don't have a timeline for it exactly, but it is in development. So um, very cool things to come. Don't know exactly how they're gonna be laid out that I can share with you yet, but absolutely. Um, love Some love for Sid. Someone on your help team is named Sid. Whoever this person is, they are fantastic and they have a world of patience. Uh, yes, Sid is wonderful. Uh, thank you for sharing. All of our sub success team members, just in case you aren't aware of this, we are all authors ourselves. We all absolutely understand what you're going through pretty much at any stage. And generally, when you're at the point where you have to write into support, it's because something isn't working or you can't find something or, you know, something you need help. And we absolutely understand how that can be stressful. And everyone on the team um, is really, really determined to help you fix it. So uh, again, we have our, our video tutorials. We have the written tutorials on the website. We have the chat bot. So if you are looking for an answer and you kind of want to DIY it, you have all of those resources, but please don't ever um, hesitate to contact our support email because our team is there to help at all times. Uh, Sam asks, if I include the cover for my book in Atticus, will it import into Ingram Spark and or Amazon KDP? The ebook cover you do want to include in your book. Uh, so in the edit book details section here, you always want to upload your EPUB cover and it will export with your book um, and it will be the image that shows in the user's library or bookshelf on their device. The uh, print cover, every single publisher is going to require you to have a separate PDF that includes the front, back, and spine all in one PDF file. So because that always has to be separate, you do not import that into Atticus. That doesn't, that doesn't come into Atticus at all. If you want to have um, a page in your book that is the just the front cover, if you want to use that as your title page, for example, you can insert that as a full page image in the book itself. Or if you want the back cover to, for example, be in your EPUB, which doesn't have a back cover, you can insert that as a full page image at the very end of your content um, in the body section itself, like in the content of the book. But for the print, you don't, um, don't upload the cover at all into Atticus. Uh, is there a way to increase the image size on the preset title page? Like on the copyright page, my logo image is appearing too small. Oh, I see. So your publisher um, logo, you can't adjust that currently. Um, if you wanted to make it different, what you could do is remove the automatically generated title page and you could create just a regular chapter and insert your publisher's logo as an image in the body section of a regular chapter and then just give it a, a chapter title or format it how you would like it to show up. Or you can always use a program like Canva or BookBrush or if you're uh, comfortable in Photoshop, that sort of idea. You can always um, create an image of your title page or any other page that you need 
and set it out um, exactly as you want it laid out and then insert it as a full page image. Uh, okay. Fantastic questions, everyone. Carolyn, I could not agree more. Thank you. Uh, you're so welcome, Michael. Thank you again for being here. And I, I agree with Carolyn. Like I said, great questions. I'm, I'm happy to answer them all for you. And as always, you guys are such an amazing community. I can't thank you enough for being as awesome as you are. Um, great support. I mean, we're a reflection of you. You guys are amazing customers. You're amazing authors. We love it. We love to support you. Um, we're inspired by you. So thank you. Um, Anne asks, uh, welcome, Anne, by the way. Thank you for being here. Uh, for Atticus, can you use the same PDF for hardback cover also for KDP? So again, the cover itself, um, you you don't create in Atticus or, or it's not used in Atticus in any way. For the manuscript, the PDF of your book and the page count that you use to calculate your cover, um, if you're using the same trim size, and that is not changing. So if you're publishing a six by nine paperback and a six by nine hardcover, you can use the same PDF of your book of the manuscript. You can export PDF from Atticus and use the same file there. Uh, you can use the same page count because it has not changed, but you will probably need to make a different cover um, according to the specs that your publisher like KDP will provide for you because um, the paperback is going to be a different thickness, a different, it will have slightly different dimensions than the hardcover book. So you will probably have to adjust your um, image for the cover, but the PDF for the manuscript can be the same as long as the trim size is the same. If you're publishing a five by eight paperback and um, an eight by 10 hardcover, I don't even know if that's the size. Those obviously are not going to be compatible. So you would need to adjust your theme for that. Um, but if it's the same size, then the manuscript is going to be the same. Uh, Carolyn asked, what other future plans does Atticus have that aren't in the public roadmap? I, I think I'm, I mostly covered those. You may have asked that before I went through the whole spiel. Um, I probably have missed some things. Um, I, like I said, the, the collaboration is the, the really big thing, being able to work with team members. Um, there will be a variety of plotting and outlining features. We will probably have some other just like um, writing and formatting features introduced, which are um, maybe escaping me at the moment. Um, I think I did cover everything though. So you may have asked this after I, I talked about that and we will always be coming up with more plans as well. Sam says, I'd appreciate a way to organize books into a series. Any plans for this? Um, so as far as like laying out your books on your home dashboard, uh, with the, um, if you come into the, my book section here, um, you can currently search by a project or a version, and you will be able to sort by project or version very soon as well. We just need to update a few things. Um, so what I mean by that is I have a, a series of books that I've titled, um, or I've added them all to a project called workbook to do that. You would open your book and in your book details section here, you can set up a project or a version. And once you have that in, so maybe you want to do a series. So your, your um, cozy mystery series or horror series or whatever it is that you're working on, you can put the title in the project section or the version in the project section. And then you will be able to um, sort by or filter by by the, doing the search in your My Books. And you can filter it by that here. And very shortly, we will be able to sort it. And it will list all of your books, but it will list them by project or version or whatever you have. So hopefully that works for you. Um, does the print cover just get uploaded into Amazon or any other publisher? Absolutely, yes. They'll have a, a, a place for you. Um, they'll ask you with one button, they'll say upload your manuscript. And then a little bit further down the page, they'll say upload your, your print cover. So they make it fairly streamlined. Uh, you, you can't miss it. You can't publish without it. So um, it's a very clear button that you'll be able to find. Thank you, Gabriel. I love these live streams too. I hadn't had a chance to do them in a while because we were so busy doing um, the updates and everything, but I really enjoy being able to come and chat with you and just be live and interactive. Um, really love it. So this is something that we will 
um, continue doing more live streams to come. They will probably not be five days in a row. I'm surprised that I'm still able to talk, but, um, but it is something that I love doing and um, Atticus loves being able to really interact with you guys on a more, uh, you know, not exactly one-to-one, -one, but a community kind of setting like this. So they live streams will probably at least be monthly, if not even more than that. So I'm really glad you like them. Thank you for being here. You're always so wonderful. Carolyn too, you're always so great and uh, such wonderful um, motivators in the comments. So we are at the one hour mark, just to give everyone um, a heads up here. I am more than happy to stay on if you have any more questions, if there's any feature that you want to see me walk through, let me know in the comments section if things slow down. Um, I'm also happy to let you go enjoy the rest of your Sunday. So um, just let me know, oops, missed one. Song Fantasy asks, am I able to change the font size to whatever uh, in the editor or do I have to use the heading option in the toolbar only? So um, this could refer to a few different things. So I'll go over the options. Um, so the font size, so for the print version, um, the font size of your book, your body font has to be set in the formatting view. Um, so you set that in your theme and it, and it programs your entire book for you. The same goes for the chapter title and the heading. You set it once um, and it applies throughout your entire book. You do have the option to do subheadings, um, but again, you're going to program those in your theme. So this here is a subheading and you can choose from heading two, three, four, five, or six. The defaults go in, the, heading two is the, the biggest next to your, your chapter title is larger, but heading two is biggest and heading six is smallest by default but you can customize these in your formatting. And then every heading two is gonna be the same, every heading six is gonna be the same, every heading, however you have it set, is going to be the same. Um, I'll jump into the, the formatting, but the only uh, caveat to that, the only other option is if you have your a really long chapter title, this is most commonly used on the acknowledgements page because the single word acknowledgements is so large that depending on your uh, title font size can be so big that it physically doesn't fit on the page. Um, so you can click the gear icon here and use a smaller chapter title. And that applies to the chapter you're working on only. So you can see my title over here got a little bit smaller compared to if I turn that off, it looks quite a bit bigger. So oops, that is the only time that you would change font size in the writing editor unless you want to change for your writing preference, like for your comfort as a writer, and you just want it to look larger on the screen, um, and you don't want this to impact the final export at all, to do that, you would use the editor settings. And you can increase your font size here and have the letters bigger on the screen for your writing comfort, but that's not gonna change how your book exports at all. So in the formatting, when you edit your theme, this is where you'll set all your sizes. So for the chapter number, um, I'm just gonna put this back to iPad so that it doesn't keep having to refresh. Uh, you change your font size for your chapter headings here. Um, for the body content of your print book, you change the font size here. You can just set one body font size for your entire book. Um, and all of your subheadings you can set here. So you can choose your font as well as the size. So you can go up to twice as large as the default size for your book, or you can even shrink it down in size a little bit. Um, even if it is smaller, it will be slightly bold just as a subheading. So hopefully that answered um, that question there. Is there any way I can send testimonials for Atticus? Absolutely, we would love that. Um, if you write into our support team, we'll be able to get you a link. Uh, after this session is over, I can include it in the description box um, below. I can't do that um, during the live stream. Um, Felicia is in the comments section. I don't know if she is available to do this, but we do have a link to send you where you can leave a review. We would absolutely love to hear from you. That would be amazing. Um, but check the description box a few minutes after this video posts, or you can write into our support team and we'll be able 
to get you the link that way. Thank you so much for asking, Sam. That is absolutely wonderful. Is there a special name for the earlier videos or do I just search on the Facebook group? I am not in the Facebook group. I avoid Facebook myself. I'm I'm all YouTube myself. Um, if you ask someone in the group though, I'm, one of the moderators will be able to point you in the right direction. Or if you jump over to our YouTube page, we do have a playlist with all of the live streams included in that playlist, uh, as well as all our, our tutorial and demo videos are on our YouTube page. So that's youtube.com um, forward slash Atticus Writer. Um, can I get page numbers next to the subheadings in the table of contents? Uh, no, not right now. That is something that may be added in a future update, but right now only the chapters get the page numbers. You can include the title of the subheadings, but they don't have their own page number. Okay, so it looks like you guys are all questioned out. So as always, I can't thank you enough for being here. I really enjoy interacting with you. Uh, I'm so glad that you are enjoying our updates. Um, and I hope that these live streams have been helpful to get you settled and inspired and writing more and more books because that's what we're all about here at Atticus. We will be releasing more demos, more tutorials, um, more updates to show you what's going on with Atticus. Um, so if you haven't yet, if you enjoyed this live stream, uh, you can give it a thumbs up, but more importantly, make sure you're subscribed. I know not all of you are subscribed, but if you don't want to miss a live stream in the future, make sure you ring the notification bell and it will always give you an alert whenever I release a new video or whenever I jump on live, because like I said, I do plan on doing more of these. So thank you so much for being here and for being wonderful. We really do appreciate you and wish you all of the best with your books, your writing, and of course, your publishing. So thanks again, everyone. Have a wonderful Sunday.